Hello everyone, happy new year. We made it to 2021. Hopefully this year is nicer to us than 2020 was, crossing my fingers, but let's get into the video. I have a nifty tip concerning Groove and Groove templates. So I think you'll find this one interesting. Let's get into it. I'm in the same project I used for the last video, but let's have a quick refresher of what we're working with here. think you get the gist. So in the last video, we looked at um, treating loops and some techniques that you can use to, you know, process and treat loops so that they sit better and more comfortably in your mix if you're using a loop as a loop. So if that interests you and you haven't seen the video yet, go check that out. But let's get into today's video. So we're going to look at Groove and groove templates and extracting grooves. So one of the major factors that contributes to an interesting and engaging groove is timing. So what I wanted to show you today is how you can extract a groove from another track or a loop and then apply that, you know, on other parts, other drum parts in your song. So let's do it. Say for instance, I have this drum loop here and I want to extract the groove from this. Say I really like the timing, I like the fill, and I want to extract the groove from this drum loop so that I can apply it on other parts, other drum parts in this project and maybe use it in the future. So let's do it. First thing I'm going to do is open up Slice X and I'm going to drop the drum loop into Slice X. Okay. So first thing it's going to do is going to dump everything into the piano roll and create some markers for us like that. Um, let's open up Slice X and we're going to do some adjusting with the markers here. So I'm going to right click on this little icon with the the little razor tool and the markers and we're going to go small grid slicing which is going to put a grid on every 16th note division which is what I want. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in here and adjust these markers. So I'm going to switch this snap to okay it's already on zero crossing I just want to make sure that it's on zero crossing and I'm going to go through here and adjust these as needed. So this one needs to be moved forward here. This one back a little bit. If there's no transient, there's not a transient here, there's not a new hit, so I'm going to leave that marker on the grid. I'm only going to adjust it if there's a transient there that it's, it's off. That one's fine. This one needs to be moved forward. And I mean, you can be as precise as you want here. If I was, you know, doing this for real, if I was extracting a groove from a loop or a section of a track, then I would be as precise as possible because I want to, you know, extract the groove. So if you're going to have sloppy markers and timing, then it's not going to, you know, probably be ideal for what you're looking for. Notice that one back a little bit. That one's good. That one's fine because there's no transient there. Move that one forward a little bit. That one's good. Move that one forward. That one looks good. That one's good. Move this one back. Okay. So now that we've got all of our markers tightened up, um, just the way we want them to. Next thing I'm going to do is right click here and choose flat and groove. And that's going to put 
all of our MIDI notes, all of our slices onto one single MIDI note here. Once I have that done, I'm going to go to our little drop down arrow in the piano roll and then we're going to go file, save score as. I've already saved this, this groove template. I did it just a few minutes ago, um, but you're just gonna save this wherever your grooves are and hit save. And then you can apply that on other parts in this track, other drum parts that may benefit from some swing. Um, and you can maybe use it in the future as well on another track. So let's apply this swing on some of the hats here. So on this shaker, I'll just mute the bass, the kick for a second, and maybe even the effects here. Yeah, so the shaker is just doing an offbeat eight, eighth note, same with this 808. So I'm not, I, I don't want to apply any swing to it, the offbeat. I want to leave that on the grid. Um, but these hats, for instance, you know, playing this little kind of rolling 16th pattern, I would want to apply um, swing to that. So what I could do is apply the same swing that we extracted from this drum loop and apply it to these hats, for instance. So I'm gonna get rid of this, the slice X, we don't need that anymore. Um, let's go to our hats here, send us to the piano roll. And I'm gonna go Alt Q to quantize and we're going to select our groove template that we just made. So that for me, that's this one here. I'm gonna apply that. And then you can uh, adjust this accordingly. So that's, this is without any swing. And you can play around with that, um, you know, play with the sensitivity and then just went when you're happy with it, hit accept. And then you can see there that it's applied the same swing, the same timing as our drum groove that we extracted the groove from. And there you go. Um, it, it's just a, you know, a nice little um, tip to have in, in your toolbox because, you know, s groove is so essential in dance music that sometimes you know, extracting a groove like this can be um, a nice way to, to, to get things, you know, it's just a nice thing to have in your arsenal. So there you go. That's how you would apply it on other parts. Um, another side note here is, say for instance, you have a, you found a shaker loop that you really like. You like the timing, you like the way it feels, um, but you don't necessarily like the sound itself what you could do is, is use that as kind of a guide to, you know, program your own shaker loop that has the same timing and fill with your own sample or samples. So you could extract the groove, the same process that I just showed you, but then you could also use that loop as a reference for velocity information as well. So for instance, um, let's say I have I'll just go to like a new pattern and let's see here. We'll just grab a random sample. Um, let's see, we'll go one shots and we'll go hi hats. Open up just for an example here. We'll just trim that and Say I want to make a new um, hi-hat pattern, and we'll just do this. Okay. So 
So say we have a shaker loop and we like the timing, we like you know the accents with the velocity and the way it feels, but we don't like the shaker itself. What we could do is find our own sample that we like. Let's say it's this one here, and we could apply you know, the groove that we extracted. So same thing that we just did, Alt Q. We can apply this, this groove setting if we'd like. And we can hit accept. And then say we want to kind of follow um, the velocity information as well on our reference shaker loop. Um, we, can, we can just drag that audio file straight in. We can just use, I'm just gonna use this as an example um, let's see, just, yeah, we'll just do this. We'll just use this loop as an example. You can pull that straight in and, and use this as a reference to, you know, adjust our velocity. So that one's, you know, down a little bit, you know, this one's a little bit higher, so on and so forth. That's just a little side note there. And then if you want to turn that off, it's in helpers and background waveform, you can turn that on and off, just like that. So there you go, extracting grooves. It can be a nice thing to try out. I've done it a couple times where I found a section of a track that I really like, and I would just you know find a one to two bar loop from that track, cut it out with Edison, and follow the same process to extract the groove, or you can do it with a loop, just like we did. And then you could save that in your groove pool and apply that on future tracks. So hopefully that was useful. Leave me a comment or question and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Take care.